As we embark on the Great Canadian Farm Tour, it is important to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of Indigenous peoples. Our culture in the Classroom Canada recognizes and honors the enduring presence of the diverse Indigenous communities across Canada, including the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We acknowledge the deep connection that Indigenous peoples have to the land, waters, resources, and all of our culture. We express our gratitude for their stewardship and custodianship of these lands for generations. Our Culture in the Classroom Canada recognizes that acknowledging the traditional territories we reside and work on is only a small step towards reconciliation. We ask that we all continue to learn more about the Indigenous peoples in these regions, to consider the history and ongoing colonialism on this land, and to reflect on how each of us can contribute to reconciliation. Hello, bonjour. Welcome everyone to season three of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. We are so excited to have everyone join us today from across Canada. My name is Mercedes Unwin from Our Culture in the Classroom Canada, and I'll be your MC for today. Before we get started, we just want to provide a few reminders. For those who want to follow along in French, please use the inter interprofile link provided in the chat to access the interpreting and closed captioning services provided for this event. We ask that everyone is mindful this is an educational event, so inappropriate conduct happening in the chat, such as spamming and improper comments, will not be tolerated. Throughout the tour, we welcome you to post your questions in the chat to get them answered. We will answer as many questions as possible. The mystery word for your student activity books will appear at the end of this episode, so please stick around. Finally, we would love to know where everyone is joining us from. Please comment in the chat if you haven't already, your school and your location. Now, we would like to welcome our first tour hosts of the Great Canadian Farm Tour, Terry and Pat, from Metaview Alpaca Farms located in Bruce Mines, Ontario. Hi. Hey, Hi, Terry. Hi, it's so nice to have you join us today. So as we're going to get started, we're just going to acknowledge a few of the schools that are around here. And first, we're going to do that by allowing you, both of you, to acknowledge a couple schools that you'd want to do a shout out to. Yeah, first of all, we want to do a quick shout out to Mrs. Veerman's uh, class in Adelaide McDonald. And Emma and Austin's class in East Williams Memorial. They're uh, kind of special because they have alpacas named after them. And of course, we definitely want to reach out to our Algoma District uh, School Board uh, for anybody who's actually been able to come out to our farm and actually see them uh, for a school tour. So welcome, Wonderful. everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to leave this stream and allow Terry and Pat take it over because she's going to... Uh, they're going to show you some great um, important information about alpacas. They're going to share that experience with everyone. And then you'll get a close-up view of the cute alpacas that are actually wandering in the background. So I'm just going to say bye for now to everyone. Yes. Oh. Oh, well, thanks for joining us. So uh, we have an alpaca farm. We have 74 alpacas on the farm here. Uh, they're fun, adorable, very curious creatures. Um, and every single one has a name. They're more of a pet to us than uh, us operating a farm, we always say. so. Well, that's a great, a great thing to talk about how old they are or how old they live till. So alpacas live 15 to 20 years old in the North American climate. Our oldest alpaca currently is 17 years old. We might get to see him a little bit later. His name is Luca. And our oldest alpaca we've had on this farm lived to almost 24. And that was Micah. She passed away last year, but uh, lived a great life right to the end. So very long life. So alpacas belong to the camelid family. They're like camels. They're small ruminants. They have three stomachs. So one thing we want to talk about alpacas is every year you have to shear them. Alpacas don't shed, so they can actually get heat stroke and die. So we want to make sure that we shear them. Right behind us, you can see here, is our shearing table. And you'll be able to see here a picture of Joy on our shearing table, how we're able to put them on. If Mercedes can put that up Mercedes, can you put that one picture up? Oh, there it is. Yeah. 
So that's what they look like when they're on the shearing table. So when they're on the table, when I shear, we have a little bit different clippers than you would normally use at home to do your trimming of your hair. We have large shears that we use that take all, uh, that will last us all day long. And if we look at another picture, Mercedes, if you could do the diagram picture of the different sections. So you can see the blanket there. The blanket is the most important part that we want to use that will help us make different products. And we're going to talk about that shortly. The other fun thing we like to do is we give haircuts to the top of their hairs and make them look cute. And again, maybe down the road, you'll be able to see some pictures on our Facebook or Instagram. So what are some of the other things you do while they're on the table? So while they're on the table, um, it's a great time. We're gonna to do toenails. We don't want them to get too long. Um, so we'll, we'll trim them back. We do a couple uh, needles. Um, so we kind of are like the vet uh, for the days that we do this. And um, we will make sure that they get their vaccine. And there's also a really important um, needle we have to do to, there's a magenta worm um, that is carried through deer, which we have lots around here. And the alpacas can actually pass from that. So we have to be diligent. Now, the other thing is really important is that alpacas don't have top teeth. So their bottom teeth can grow really long. If it grows any longer than their top palate, what we actually have to do is grind that back a bit. And there is no nerve endings at the top of their teeth and we have a special guard on it. We cringe, it stinks, but it's really important that we maintain the health of these alpacas so that they can eat the grass in the pastures and eat their pellet food. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys a picture of what an alpaca look like before they get shorn and how fluffy they are. Kind of like actually what you're seeing right now. Hey, Terry and Pat, we just have a quick question before we show you, sure. put the picture yeah. up. Um, so Miss Howard from grade three Elm Street is asking, specifically Lily is from her classroom, what do alpacas like to eat? Oh, well, can we turn it around and- Well, we can... let's give us one second and I'll show you exactly what they're doing. We're gonna flip our camera around. So the alpacas, as you can see here, love to eat hay because it's winter right now or still, we don't have any uh, fresh grass outside in the pastures to eat. And the other thing, and I'm gonna show you what happens. We feed them pellets for breakfast and dinner. That was a great question. Now, during our tours, they actually get to feed right out of our hands. So it's kind of like a treat too. In these pellets is a lot of great vitamins. Oh, you can. Sure. So um, oh, they're all saying hi. Alpacas are really curious. As you can see, they want to know what's in our hands and what we have. So there's a couple different types of alpacas. There's wakaya, which is what we have here. We're actually gonna show you in our stuffies. Yeah, so this is a wakaya and this is a surrey. So you can see surreys have longer, more bouncy hair and wakayas have fiber that grows straight out of their body like what we have here. Most of the alpacas in the world are the wakayas. Surreys make up about 8% of the alpaca population. Yeah. So after we shear them, some of the great stuff that we can make from their fiber is things like socks and mitts. We can make hats. I'm wearing one right now. There's another type of mitt that we can make. Do you think we have blue and pink alpacas? No. no. <laughs> we dye the yarn. So there's some yarn that's made from our alpacas that's been dyed. And we can also make scarves to keep us nice and warm. Alpacas warmer than wool and softer than wool. The other great advantage point of alpaca 
is they are hyperallergenic. It's actually one reason why we bought the farm. So, go back to the pictures of before and after. so if you, um, Mercedes, if you can show the picture, so the before picture, kind of like what these guys are looking like now. Hi everyone, we're just experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, our host just accidentally left our stream, so we're just going to wait for a few minutes to get them back. Thank you for your patience and we'll just have them back online in a few mo moments, hopefully. As we were waiting to get our hosts back online, again, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, we're going to go into our first brain break. So have your student activity books ready to follow along and then feel free to do some of the activities as we're waiting for them to return. Thank you so much for understanding this brief technical difficulty. So we are back and we have Terry and Pat returning with us. Sorry that we lost them for a few seconds. We thought we'd go into our first brain break um, and our only brain break of the event while we're waiting for you to come back online. So it's good uh, to have you back with us. And then um, this might be a good opportunity to actually take a few questions and then we'll go back into what you're talking about before we lost you. How does that work? Yeah, sorry, where, where did we, we don't, we don't know where we lost you. We kept talking. <laughs> you lost, we lost you just shortly as you were talking about the different fibers that, and byproducts of fibers from alpaca hair. So you're going through your hats. You're talking about the hats briefly. So we'll get through okay. with our, our first couple of questions. So Miss Banco's class wants to know how long it takes for their wool to grow back. So it's, uh, it takes one year. We don't want to shear any more than once a year um, because they need to have a nice warm coat to keep them warm for the winter. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you, Ms. Banco's class for asking that. And then we have another question from Ms. Howard. Uh, Finley specifically asks, do you have to give your alpacas a bath to, before you want to shear them? We don't give them a bath, but what we do in the summertime on really hot days is we put out the small kiddie pool so that they can cool down. At shearing time, before we shear them, instead of giving them a bath, you gotta turn it the other way, instead of giving them a bath, we use a very special brush to try and get off the debris that's in their coats. 
Oh, wow. I'm sure they enjoy just relaxing in the little pool. And before we lost you, you actually mentioned the word hypoallergenic. What does that mean? Yeah, so hyperallergenic means that there's no reaction um, such as um, like lanolin with sheep's wool can cause uh, irritation, um, uh, itch, um, but it's uh, a product that, like I said, for my, me specifically, I have asthma. So when I don't, uh, I don't have any issues with that. So I'm going to change the camera back to the other way so we can walk over to the girls while we talk. Maybe <laughs> while we're talking, um, we didn't get to see um, what they look like after shearing. Maybe Mercedes, you could bring up first the picture of them uh, before they're shorn. Sure can. We'll pop that up in a second. And then as you're speaking, um, Terry and Pat, this is just a reminder so everybody can hear you really clearly. Just hold the mics really closely. So thanks so much. Okay. And then I'm just going to sneak out a little bit from here. Okay. So what we're actually doing is we're walking over to the girls' side. Um, we separate the boys and girls. Um, the girls, we could have... They can get pregnant at any time and we don't want alpacas in the middle of the winter. So we try to specifically breed in summertime. So in this next pen that we're going into is going to be our almost one year olds and our pregnant moms. So a baby alpaca is called a Crea. Now this is Miley. Miley's very friendly, as you can see. <laughs> so the fiber that comes with the very first year that we pull, that when we shear, is like Velcro from a baby Korea. See how long that is? But in there, you can also see how clean at the bottom it is and super long let's see if milo will give me a kiss hey buddy. i'm just hi terry and pat i'm just coming in with a question from nicole quigley how okay. many babies do you, how many baby alpacas do you have at this time right now we have five creas So we also on the farm have a couple llamas. And a lot of people think that llamas and alpacas are the same. They are both from the camelid family, but llamas are very different. So we're gonna go visit one of the llamas so you can see the difference. We're gonna see Delilah. Wonderful. And as we're walking over there to see Delilah, um, Madame Boutin class, um, Eleanor specifically is asking, when do alpacas have their babies? And then how long is their pregnancy? Oh, is she gonna eat it? They love apples, as you can see, eating from Pat. That is a very good question. They um, are pregnant for 11 and a half to 12 months. And we like the babies to be born in early spring to late summer. So you can see here Delilah, our llama, she's the brown one. You can see her ears are much longer. There's some spitting. <laughs> you can see her ears are much longer than the alpaca's ears. She's taller than the alpacas. She's stronger than the alpacas. She acts like a guard animal on the farm. So we didn't talk yet about prey and predator animals. Alpacas are prey animals. And if a predator, our biggest predators are coyotes and bears. If a coyote got in here, for example, Delilah would try and scare it off to keep her herd safe. I don't know, Mercedes, maybe you want to pull up the uh, picture of the llama and the alpaca so people can see it. We can kind of see we got a good, uh, they're kind of working with us today. They don't always, but then you can see a side by side of an alpaca and a llama.
maybe while you're pulling that up, I'll talk about um, spitting. We saw a little bit of spitting there as they were competing for the apples. Alpacas get a bad rap for spitting. Uh, they do spit. It's not something they would do kind of out of the blue or rarely would do out of the blue, but it is one of their lines of defense. If they feel scared or threatened, they would spit to kind of say, because they don't have words, so they would spit to say, stay back, you're, you're scaring me, you're getting too close. So the other thing which is really neat, check out the chocolate covered raisins they produce. No, I'm just kidding, that's their poop. So what's really neat about their poop is that you'll see they don't poop just everywhere. They pick a spot and they all like to poop in the same spot. The other great thing about their poop is it's a cold manure and we can put it in the garden right, right away and it's very high in nitrogen. Mercedes, are you able to pull up that picture? Can you hear us? Yes, we just had it up and now we're just adding it back in. Oh, there you go. Sure. It because, sorry, I think. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, a great picture um, that you can see the difference between and some of the, the differences between them as well. Oops, hi, Milo. <laughs> so maybe we just heard a little bit there. I don't know if you heard it on the microphone. Um, often people ask what kind of noise an alpaca makes. And one of the noises that they make is a hum. Um, we hear that a lot more over here with the babies and the moms. That's how they communicate with each other. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe Mercedes, you can pull up the, uh, what was that one called? The alpaca hum video. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then um, the other noise that they make, another one of the noises that they make is an alarm call. So if they maybe see something off in the distance or hear something that startles them, they'll make this noise to alert all the other alpacas that there might be danger. Mercedes, I think that one is called alpaca alarm. So a funny noise that one is. We don't hear it often uh, around here, but uh, we do get it uh, sometimes. Terry and Pat, I feel like this is a great time for another question. So Sharon sure. Anderson is asking, how sharp are their teeth? Oh, that's a great question. Well, they have only bottom teeth in the front and those teeth are pretty blunt. Uh, the uh, they do grow fighting teeth in the back and those are razor sharp. At shearing time, we have to cut those down so that they don't hurt each other. Great question. And uh, surprisingly enough, we're in our last five minutes of our, our, our tour today. So let's go through a couple more questions. So this sure. question is from the Dussault Homeschool. So sheep's wool is warm when wet. Is that the same with alpaca wool? Yes, it is. It is warm as well. Some of the great qualities of alpaca fiber, it's actually five times warmer than wool. It's also moisture wicking. Um, it's a very breathable product and it's and very super soft. soft. <laughs> Just imagine cuddling up to this all day long. It's hard yeah. for us to work. <laughs> I would say it's definitely a, a hard days of work being able to hang out with alpacas. So we have uh, Megan Drever. So um, Eileen from her Maple Creek ask if they're related to camels, which you've kind of mentioned that they are, and can they go a long time without water like camels do? So actually alpacas do require to, we, 
as much water as we can provide them. They'll, they'll drink as, they don't hold water like a camel will. Um, so it's really important that we always provide them with fresh water. And alpacas are also domesticated animals. So even in South America where they originate from, they're still domesticated. Wonderful, thanks for that question. We're going to do about two to three more questions. So Joanna Clark, specifically Kyler, is wondering what made you choose to do an alpaca farm and become alpaca farmers? That's a really great question. So we bought this farm two and a half years ago. And two main reasons is, like I mentioned before for myself, is uh, they're hyperallergenic. So I didn't have to be worried about being allergic to animals, especially horses I am. Terry is a very... Um, we only use these guys for their fiber and, um, and it would be very hard to uh, have to eat them for dinner. So, uh, especially with names. So those were two main reasons why we fell in love with the alpaca farm. Wonderful. And our next qu question, um, specifically from Waylon, um, they asked, how fast can they run? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Just the other night, um, they, were, they were running and um, it's, it's more playful when they uh, are running, but, uh, or when it's feeding time. It's actually away. called pronking. <laughs> when, they, when they pronk, it's a, a run that they do where they kind of bounce and hop around. So if you have an opportunity, maybe you can Google that and you can see what it looks like. I can't Alpaca get that. pronking, yeah. I can't get that on demand right now. <laughs> Very cute. So pronking, everyone. So feel free to Google slash YouTube pronking just to be able to see how alpacas pronk. It sounds very cute. It almost sounds like a noise that they're making. They're pronking as they're going yeah. along. <laughs> it's kind of like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh jumping around. Oh, that's, that's a, great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a great description for anybody who's watched Winnie the Pooh, specifically Tigger, um, just seeing him bounce along. And then how do you remember all their names? You have so many different alpacas on your farm. How do you keep track of them? And how do you make sure that you know if someone's hurt or needs something from you? How, how do you make uh, sure you're there to serve them as they need it? So um, with the names, just like uh, the classroom, the teachers, uh, they have to remember a lot of kids' names every single year. Um, so it's the same thing. Now, if you did notice, some of them will have their name tags. There's August, but a lot of them end up having personal traits, personal um, personalities. There's Dory right there. And um, and then they have little distinct um, aspects to their face. And, uh, and we also language. And then just to make sure when we talk about medical wise, uh, if one does get hurt or if one might have uh, a potential disease, we do microchip them. So we can scan them and confirm that we do have the proper animal. Great question. Thanks so much for answering that question. That's a great question. It's very interesting the the amount of steps you go through. One, to keep track of them by microchipping them. And then the fact that they're all kind of have unique personalities and have little tags so that you know who's who and um, know everything about them. So let's do yeah. one more question and then we'll move on to any final words that you both would like to share. And this final question is from Everly. What is your favorite fun fact about alpacas? Oh, <laughs> there's lots of great fun facts about alpacas. Um, I think one of my fun facts is that they only have bottom teeth in the front. What's your favorite fun fact, Pat? I don't, I don't know if it's a fact. I just love being around them. I love them so much that sometimes even in the middle of the summer, I go and have, pull up the hammock and have a nap beside them. So. Fun. I love that. So, um, so it's just nice to be able to hang out with such a, a lovable animal. The fact that they're so attentive and they just want to spend time with you. So thanks for sharing that. Both of you, Terry and Pat, about your fun facts, um, specifically how great it is to spend time with them and then around their teeth. Um, so just for our final wrap up before we um, end this session, 
um, and provide the mystery word of the day. Terry and Pat, do you have any final words you want to share with all the students across Canada around alpaca farming and both of you being alpaca farmers and any words of inspiration maybe for um, any youth that want to explore being you and becoming alpaca farmers? One thing we didn't mention was we totally did. Uh, we came from the London area and we totally kind of dropped our lives and um, decided it was time for a change. So it was only up until two years, two and a half years ago that we actually became farmers. Uh, so we had different careers prior and, um, and, and we jumped into it. So uh, whether you're young or, or older and seeking a career change, um, Farming is amazing. It doesn't have to be necessarily even on, on large scale. We know a lot of uh, other people who've been starting out on smaller scale farms and um, it's a great, um, it's, it's a love for the business to get into. I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna get rich off of it. Well, I've kind of heard this and said this a lot. Um, farming is a lifestyle, so. Uh, you can make it as much as you want, as big as you want, and as small as you want. So it's great to hear kind of your both of your journeys. Um, Terry, is there anything else you'd like to add based on what Pat said? Oh, I think he caught it all. <laughs> we knew nothing about alpacas when we bought the farm. So it's it was a big learning curve and we wouldn't change it. Okay. Well, I love that so much. And thank you for sharing every piece of learning that you've had in the past two years and sharing that um, it's possible to become a farmer and that it's an adventure worth having and the inspiration that you're kind of fostering and sharing is really kind of something that I enjoy. So thank you so much for sharing your learning with me and everybody watching today. So thank Thanks you so again. Yes, thank you very much for having us uh, join you today and we'd love to come back again one uh, another time another time again. So thank you to everybody across Canada who's joined us today. And uh, it's, uh, um, it'd be nice to have everybody on the farm, but uh, this is just an amazing way to show what our farm is like. So thank you. Yes. So before we close off this episode, and again, thank you everyone for waiting patiently. I'm excited to share the mystery word for today is farm or days fam. So thank you again for joining this very first episode of this season of Great Canadian Farm Tour. I think Terry and Pat did a great job kicking us off for all 10 episodes that we're running. So we have nine more to do over the course of April and May. And the next one will be happening on April 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So thank you again for joining us. And we're just going to say goodbye for now. And this is, uh, I'm sure... Many questions will come for Terry and Pat. So sure this is just a goodbye for now. Make sure you guys check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We regularly post what's going on at the farm, especially during baby season in July. We'll be able to, you'll be able to see uh, when that happens. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, yeah, again, um, feel free to join Terry and Pat on Facebook and Instagram at Meadowview Alpaca Farms. They regularly track the life cycle of their alpaca so just in case for anyone who didn't catch that i'm just sharing that and then we will go and say goodbye